What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your June 2nd reading for your daily creative series. So we're going to dive right in here. So I would like to invite the angels, my guardian angels, my spirit guides, protectors, teachers, and their healing energy to this space. And I ask that it is a safe and brave space that allows for the fullest expression of our light, humanity, ascension, and healing. Okay, so we're going to dive in and take from the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle. Whoa. So, okay, you want that back in. There was... You want this one? Okay. Oh my goodness, that one almost fell out again. I don't know if you saw that. So this is Ally in Disguise. Discover the hard to find blessing. Silver linings, friends. Silver linings. Oh, divine drunkenness. Surrender to your spiritual reverie. Yes and yes. Whatever spiritual reverie means to you. Stand up and be recognized. Behold, you are the inspiration you've been looking for. When's the last time you blew your own mind? <laughs> messages do you have for my daily creatives for june 2nd spirit whoa that is too many six of wands the sun oh beautiful the wheel wow. three of wands um there's this <laughs> there's an older song called it's like high hopes like i've got high hopes something like that just like popped into my head <laughs> Uh, bridging consciousness energy lovely we've had that three times in almost in every element now except for the swords temperance hanged muse high priestess seven of swords and the hierophant this was uh up here for one day this week um i think it might have been yesterday um, interesting, interesting that it's in the victory position today. That's a progression. My friends, we are making progress this week. Um, so we're starting in this, uh, six of wands. So I feel like there's something you might be recognized for, um, at work or in your relationship. Like this can just be a, you know, a partner check-in if you do that once a month and whatnot. Like I, I recommend it cause it's quite healthy and it may not seem like it's all that sexy because it's not like, you know, um, partners just assuming and knowing <laughs> all about you seems like the, you know, this, uh, you know, super sexy way of things happening. But for me, it's like, um, connecting intentionally and understanding them and being curious about them and, and learning them as opposed to assuming. So, you know, if you're doing some kind of check-in three, three, three with on the time, if you're doing some kind of check-in with your partner, um, because it's the beginning of the month or whenever you do it, there could be things that they would, they'll recognize you for and be really appreciative of you for this could also relate to work um uh, in addition to that this could be about um could be work it could also just be projects that you're working on like you might get an email from someone saying thank you uh for something that you contributed you could get um you know inter-office mail that kind of thing it could be um anything along those lines and the reason why i'm saying that is it it's something that's i feel like it's going to shift a little bit of your energy um because we have the sun and the wheel here which it's almost like I'm hearing cascade like a domino effect. Like there could be that one thing that happens that leads to another thing, to another thing, to another thing. Like it, and it could just be your energy, right? Like your energy is shifted because of that thing. And it puts you in a really good place, even though we need to cultivate that for ourselves, we can still milk those moments for all the good that they make us feel or give us that feeling of, right? Because nothing can really make us feel anything, but realistically we can milk those moments right because they're joy that's that's kind of what it's for <laughs> right to experience it four for four on the time so it's like that will then set off this sort of chain of events like you'll be compelled to go for a coffee and then maybe buy the one for the person 
in, you know, behind you and like a pay it forward thing. And then they do that for somebody else to somebody else. And then it expands outward that way because of the wheel and this expansion. Um, or, you know, you could be compelled to go and or call a friend and then you make plans and then you meet someone where you go to those plans that has an idea that you and like so on and so forth. This this beautiful breadcrumb trail. Um, it's very Sagittarian energy, um, just this like optimism and but this is also like the sun is one of the best cards in the deck so I don't think it's weird or strange to read that energy that way like I feel like this is kind of a, maybe a, a good fortuitous week like there's things happening in the background that you can't really see um yeah and that's maybe the ally in disguise here right this could be your perspective holding in the light when things happen that aren't necessarily that would normally not make you feel all of that all that shiny right <clears throat> But I think it's also about letting yourself be recognized and be appreciated and thanked, right? Because overgiving, I, you know, 555 five, five on the time, probably a change of this, like the wheel is here, so that does not shock me. But um, when it comes to overgiving, we can overgive, but there's also this like not letting ourselves receive, you know, and I really had to take a look at this in terms of the energy in the back of my, uh, ch my chakras, uh, because I started to have issues in the back areas of things, right? Like, um, uh, that sounds weird, but like just, you know, lower back and then my neck and, you know, having, I, uh, there's like a small fracture in my spine that didn't heal properly. I'm okay. But sometimes when it rains, I really like, but like days of rain, I can really feel it coming. Um, but it's like, I realized that that those energy centers can aggravate, you know, these areas of our body and have real effects because, um, that's the receptivity, right? The, the front energy centers are where we the energy goes out from that's where it flows out from the back portion of that is where it comes into and that's our receptivity as well certainly there's a flow of that energy around um, but I really I started to do a lot of um, research to understand my experiences with this um, Cindy Dale's books are really helpful for that um, but also just think about it on your own like rely on some of your own wisdom too right um and just the ways that energy flows and just work with it and sit with it and listen to what it has to tell you as well. Um, so that's, but stand up and be recognized. What I'm saying is that this is crucial to overall chakra health, to overall energy center health and auric layers and bodies because those two are intricately, intricately connected and interwoven with the energy centers in our body, right? The auric layers and our aura itself is, is all part of that one system, right? It's not like you have your energy centers and then your aura operates independently. No, because each layer corresponds to your energy centers. So if one is out of balance, that auric layer will also be out of balance. Oh my gosh. <laughs> energy centers 101. <laughs> um, but this uh, stand up and be recognized is, um, I feel like you need to let yourself it's not just about letting yourself shine, but letting yourself be thanked, right? Ooh, okay. <laughs> and we're back. Um, I feel, but this is like, there's something that you're positive, positively expectation, positively expectant, uh, positive expectation about you hold this positive uh, view or expectation. Like, you know, when, and that's the domino effect. Did I say that already? I didn't even see this. That is interesting. The domino effect. I think I said it with these in terms of like going somewhere and then, huh, that's funny. Yeah. So that could very well be the case. Like there's some kind of domino effect that, that occurs once you're in this energy, because it's just this cascade of wonderful, this like cascade of, of, um, richness in your life from your heart center when you're in that energy and I think that this is the sort of making real of things that might seem a little bit outside your reach which could be here right like this could be this energy of like things are going really well like what how do we do a spread for when things are going really well I feel like that's what this is right like things are quite like the outlook for today is great so it's you know you have this bridging energy and it's like from good to how good can it get and that's where I think this um this divine drunkenness comes in this spiritual reverie, right? Is like, how are we surrendering to that even when it's good, right? Even when it's good. And that's where like doing these practices, the important part isn't just to do it when it's, when it's, um, when we're feeling the heat of things, right? You don't just like, I know I don't just clear my energy at night before, before I go to sleep and 
um, go through my gratitude list mentally before I go to sleep. I don't do that on the days when it's hard. I don't rely on my energy when it is in those moments um, like lower or weaker or whatever to to do that. You have to do it every day and it cultivates your energy and it really does. It really does. Um, it's so helpful. So doing that is probably part of this bridging energy here where it's like positive expectation also needs to be brought into balance as well, right? This three of wands bridging to the, the temperance card here. Now, in, in that's one iteration of it. The other iteration is something that could become a tower if we don't watch is that our positive expectations can, you know, it's I'm almost getting this sort of passivity to it. Like if we if we just assume that the good days that come, um, it's not in we don't anticipate the worst either that's this isn't three of uh, wands in reverse this is looking at what's happening and saying you know what I want great days and I want my bad days to be just good days right because we're gonna have days where we're like meh it, you know we're gonna have them it's life right it's gonna happen so how do we make the great days great like but then the, the, the bring the others up to good right how do we build that in and I think that that's sort of checking our positive expectations with the effort that we're putting into maintaining a whole practice as opposed to these intermittent things where like, oh, hey, it's great. I don't need to, you know. Um, and then I, this bridging energy here is in your uh, protagonist position, which is excellent because it's the thing that's helping you to, to cross from this one awareness or this one point of departure into the next. Um, I don't see any aces here. So I feel like this is more of the maintenance. Like I'm feeling like this is like, um, I'm seeing someone, um, greasing like brake pads. I, do they grease brake pads? I have no idea. I literally just take my car into the <laughs> mechanics and I'm like, here are the keys great. And then I just go and hang out. Like I, I have no idea. Do they grease? But anyways, but it's like, how do you keep things maintained? Right? How do you, you have to, and I know with brake pads, you have to clear out the dust and make sure all of that is functional. And I say brake pads because those are the, the, the meh days, right? But the meh days that can still be good, right? They can still be good. So it's about finding that equilibrium and that balance. And I think the, the antagonist is here to say, um, the antagonist in the temperance card is here to say that there's a way that this can swing way out of balance. And this is just a reminder of that, right? This is a reminder that it can be so easily out of balance. <clears throat> And that's where even the meh days can be an ally in disguise. That's the silver lining of this too. Uh, and the purple, I think this, to me, I'm seeing a lot of third eye and sh uh, crown chakra energy too. So I think this is like connecting um, to the big picture and like the, the, you know, seeing through your third eye and seeing what others may, what may not be so obvious to folks, what may not be so obvious, right? Um, and then the challenge is the hanged muse. So you may want to keep moving forward, but I feel like there's periods of reflection that are required because the victory portion, like the triumph over that challenge is the high priestess. So it's like, there's wisdom in waiting. There's wisdom in the, there's wisdom in the, the, in the, the implementation of a spiritual practice. There's wisdom in, a, in that process, because in that process, we really learn who more of who we are, Right. You know, with my journaling, I, I journal almost every day um, and and it doesn't have to be anything profound or particularly important. Um, sometimes it's just to know how I feel and checking in with me, right? I think I talked um, at the beginning of this reading about checking in with a partner every month, but it's like, when do you check in with yourself too, right? That has to be the fundamental and foundational thing that you're doing within yourself in order to bring that practice into a relationship. And I think this is, this is about looking at the practices that we can then bring into the places and spaces that we operate. How are you bringing a practice of gratitude into your work, into your projects, into your business, so that it's not just about being all gratitude-y when you're, which sounds very pejorative, but anyways, uh, all gratitude when it's great but then when it's not so great there's no practice to support it's almost like bumper bowling right like <laughs> it's like bumper bowling you you want the bumpers there because it makes sure that everything goes smoothly and that is the spiritual practice that's the 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 process right um method is sexy that's <laughs> um but that's i i think that that's what this message is here is it's like the the slow going practice the slow enlightenment, the things that are not like immediate rewards, right? I think about it in terms of eating healthy too. Like when I was first, um, I 
got, I didn't take care of myself well when I was towards the end of grad school and it definitely showed up in my body. So I, you know, and that had a lot to do with, um, energy centers and things like that too. Um, but it showed up in the form of an autoimmune, uh, disorder. And now there's no signs of that in my body because of the healthy eating, but it took a process to get there. It took a process. So it's like leaning into the process and letting that be a shining light for you. Um, and it's also understanding the role of conflict, right? Like this is like the good and the bad days. I'm almost getting like this balance of like the ta- like feeling like the bad days would take from you or like you couldn't trust the good days. But doing these practices and this slow implementation of um, good days going to great days and then meh days going to good days. Like this is the this is kind of like the way that we're evening out our perspective so that we don't feel like it's like either like horrible days that are taking from us filled with, you know, all this stuff. And then even on the good days, we in in those energies, we have to like watch for these little, you know, trickster energies to to pop out. But it it doesn't need to be like that. And I think the Hierophant is here because this is like the committed wisdom because you're committing to yourself. You're committing to a practice of this for yourself of some kind. And this could even be at work, right? Like sometimes it's just a matter of like I've, you know, I've talked to people who take breaks um, and they do that outside of the building at their workplace. They do that outside of the building because they want the break from the the space. They want that just, just, just like a reset button, right? I know that when I have time to do it, I usually go for walks near where I work um, because it's just beautiful there and it gets me out and moving, right? I don't always have the time to do it, but you know, a lot of the time there's ways that we can build in, even in the institutions that we're in, right? That's what the Hierophant represents, institutions. There's ways that we can work with that um, to really make our days work for us. Um, So that's really about, that's, that's really what this energy is about, I think. It's very interesting. It's coming out in, you know, it's not, um, there's varied ways to interpret this energy. Yeah. Ace of wands in the sun. Hey, oh, my gosh. I can't believe I just made that noise. (sighs) Real tarot. Um, So we have the Hierophant and the Seven of Swords. Spirit, can you please clarify this for me, please? Said please twice. Seven of Cups, Six of Swords, King of Swords, Seven of Swords, dang, and the Star, okay, that makes sense, so I get the impression that there's like, it's, maybe this has to do with like the, so institutions, so Hierophant represents institutions and traditions, but it also represents the things that are traditions for us, so the traditions that we've made for ourselves, and it could be that they just haven't really been nourishing you, Um, like they haven't like seven of swords and the seven of cups is very like non-committal energy haven't been nourishing you but it's also have you been adding to or or really getting serious about practices that help you right I found I usually I'm awake um, between four and five a.m of my own accord (laughs) I haven't used an alarm in probably about five or six years it just my body knows, right? Um, even when I was in grad school, I would be like, okay, I have to wake up by four in order to do these readings in order to be able to work out and do X, Y, and Z thing, and then go to work before classes in the evening. So it was like, I, my body would wake up early, like it would just know. So it's very, um, good in that way. But that extra hour in the morning, I will tell you, makes a difference every time. I, if I ever needed to have that extra hour just so that I had that time for myself to fill my cup so that this is, that's my practice, right? I would set an alarm if it meant that I had that until my body got adjusted to that. Um, so it's about finding those practices and moving towards things that are going to keep you very clear, not just about what you want, but they're going to keep you moving in a direction, um, and, and moving in a direction that is away from this kind of confusion um, and, and confusion can come from like confusion and overwhelm can come from not knowing what to pay attention to, but it can also come from th- like hanging on to things that we need to move away from. And it throws us into this total lack of clarity, um, not because we're not paying attention to the right things or we're missing opportunities or anything like that, but because that seven of swords energy, it, like taking from ourselves, you know, it's like we... Um, <laughs> I just, oh my gosh, my guides are for real Pixar characters. I heard someone poison the water hole, which is, I think, uh, Woody from Toy Story. That's like when, one of the things when you pull a string, oh my God. Anyways, I I feel like that's like, that's the, the feel of it though, right? Like 
you're 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 taking whatever you can you're just taking whatever you can get but you get to build your day in a way even if you have work like i i do i have to go to a physical location to work right now um you know i I have to do that and it's like i can say that that is taking from me or i can build my day so that i can still do these things i can still do tarot i can still have time for myself in the morning right there's something just at least one thing that we can do to shift the momentum of the energy in our day we don't always get to pick the whole thing right away we don't get to be architects of the whole building right away sometimes we start as interns and then we get you know a foot in the door and we move up and you know we work we work at it and that's really what this is about is working at it um, and it's not necessarily effort filled it's just intention oriented and that's the difference so we have temperance ace of pentacles knight of pentacles queen of cups yeah this is like so this was clarifying the six of wands the hanged muse and the high priestess so this was the energy of like being in touch with your intuition as a way to kind of unlock that but this being the initiating energy the six of wands the recognition from others setting off this chain of events that could have helped us to reflect that could have put you in a place that was allowing you to really protect and take care of your energy and that's really what this is that this whole conversation that's coming up from the cards today is about cultivating and protecting our energy summer is brilliant for that in the northern hemisphere because once um once the time change happens um for places that it still does i know not every country has the time change anymore so um forgive me i know not every province does either um but in Ontario, at least it's still there. So like when you have that, it, it adds to the day. So you have extra time in the day. So using that as the time to build this in so that when fall comes, you're already, you already have it down pat. It's just a matter of adjusting to the daylight available, right? Because I, I love summer for the way that it elongates the days, right? Um, but I feel like this is a balancing of um, understanding what... Like this, I feel like it's really an evening out of our energy and we're going to see the difference in um, th that balance in what we are able to respond to in terms of offers from the universe and opportunities. This is opportunities to do this, but this is also general opportunities that come from being in this really juicy place because we can receive from the universe, but we can also receive from other people. And this is also wisdom on the path from integrating these lessons and doing this um, and building in this kind of spiritual practice, this rich, because it's a rich appreciation of ourselves too. Because if we can't make time for ourselves, how the heck are we going to make time for a partner? Right. If we if we don't have time and we I'm not saying we have to do that every day. Um, I'm saying that if we can't even carve out time for us to journal about our feelings in a way that's really healthy to two to two on the time. How can we build a partner into that where we might want to have coffee with them in the morning where you might want to I don't know, like if if you might want to like curl up back in bed and wake up slowly, like you might want to do those things. Those are all time oriented things so it's not about negating your own habits and structures but it's looking at that and taking a, a solid look at it because if we're looking at i think yesterday it was about like the hopeful manifesting and the wishful thinking and, and all of these things this is kind of like manifesting 101 too where it's like 101 too i don't um 101 as well it's like an add-on to that um because we're not just in the vibration of like the thing itself and the moment that we receive it what happens after that you know i was um cooking today and i was thinking about um you know how when you're dating someone what is the juice in the relationship that makes it that that gives it that like long-term take i knew my own answer to that question but i was th thinking about it and just curious about how people would answer that question in my life you know um th these are the things i think about when i'm cooking dinner uh but it's like what would how would people answer that question right to go from i'm interested in this person in the immediate to these are the things that we do together to support a long-term relationship where our interest is peaked not just in one another but in the things that we do together and that third energy that's built in those kind of sacred partnerships right so what does that mean and how is that cultivated and grown and then i think that this is like your why it's the queen of cups is more of an emotional energy but i can't think of a more emotional energy than what's your why what's your why for for supporting yourself in this way what's your why for doing that how is it getting you connected with you and and deepening in your relationship with yourself? Because this is also a practice that doesn't just sink us into long-term relationships. This sinks us into long-term practices that support us uh, at a job or in a in a career, in a field. 
um, it, you know, on projects. This could be little, you know, hobbies that we take up. All of these are ways and these are indicative of how we're supporting ourselves on a regular basis. So we have the sun and the three of wands here, that positive expectation. And of course, the ten of pentacles would come out. I feel like there's something to do with planting the seeds now for a long term investment that's coming, right? These are like the little seeds that we plant within ourselves that kind of call out. There's like that energetic resonance when you meet someone and I, you know, it just fits like it fits, but it fits why. And it's like, because you've planted these seeds and it's it, you wear these habits in your energy, you wear them in your energy um, because it's very, it's very obvious. You know, if I go and see family, I have my journals with me or a journal, um, I'll bring, you know. Uh, coffee or I'll bring like the habits that make us up right they we, we tend to wear them so it's like when you meet someone you'll be able to resonate at that frequency because as much as you wear your habits they will also wear theirs and this is it seems so basic but um, when it comes down to cultivating habits that are really good for us we think of it as a gigantic pain but if we're asking for these habits in someone else, can we really say that we're inside integrity with ourselves if we're not also cultivating that same energy in our lives? And it's not about do the thing or be the thing that you want to attract because it's not about getting the stuff. It's not about getting the person. It's about creating a life that makes you so fulfilled that someone coming into your life and on that path is just an add on to an existing amazing energy and like party, <laughs> right? So what else do you have for me here, spirit? Two of cups. Of course, there's so much relationship energy here. My gosh, this can, <laughs> I'm not even, for, I'm like, oh goodness, spirit, come on. No, it's not like that at all. Um, this is really <laughs> just like, it could be relationship uh, in all likelihood, given some of the cards here. Um, but I think this is also just about looking at where you're investing and the equal investment in things, right? This isn't just about emotional labor and household labor and dividing of things like that in long-term relationships. Like if you've been in a relationship already, and this is like a long-term relationship that we're looking at in this spread, this can also just be building in supports for your own growth in the long term, right? Um, and, and building in supports so that as you grow, um, your partner can see how you're growing and that can be something that you end up doing together or something along those lines, right? Um, but this is really about an even give and take all sharpened by this perspective. I feel like there might be, again, it's such an unassuming springboard for this incredible information from spirit. So four of swords. Yeah. Some, I feel like there's healing some pot, some expectations, I guess the five of cups was on the bottom here. And then the ace of cups. Yeah. We're healing some expectations about, uh, emotions and the way that we handle them, the way that we respond to them. Um, yeah, big time. The magician. Yeah. The wheel and the bridging energy. This is like, this is so I'm, I have, I have chills right now. This is like that bridging energy and that's definitely upside down. <laughs> um, it's like we, we're, we're crossing the bridge here, but it starts with the wheel turning and this is like our higher self. This is our sort of 5d self in this energy of making it real, making something happen. This is the, um, integration of that momentum from the wheel turning. And then this magician card, this beautiful little bit of mercury is, uh, is showing up here because it's like, you're communicating with your, your 3d and 5d self are communicating here at this particular table. And it's like, you've got everything you need. Number one, number two, things are moving. Um, and you know, the tools here indicate a practice, the tools indicate a practice, right? All the tools on the table. That indicates a kind of craft that the magician is working with and within. So it's like, what's your practice to manifest magic? I know the magician's not literal magic, but just bear with me because it is right now. <laughs> We have the Ace of Wands and the Six of Pentacles. I'm not surprised. That's like new, new, new. And I see this is where it's like the magician is holding up this wand, right? So it's like messages from the universe are coming in and there's like ideas that are coming to you. And that's the other thing about cultivating your energy through a practice that is grounded and anchored in habits and specific steps that you take every day. The power of that, the power of that is when you get ideas, you have something to ground it within so that it's not this abstract thing. This is also, I think, new opportunities that you're able to recognize because you're in the energy um, of intention you're in the energy of knowing what you want because you can't have these practices and these these like methodological approaches to things um, 
not rigidity i'm not talking about that this is like this beautiful consistent approach and it's that consistency and when you're consistent things just balance out in beautiful ways where you are able to give but you're also able to receive too right and the ace of wands is like being given to by the universe so this six of cups or six of cups the six of pentacles is about giving beyond that you're receiving from the universe but you're also giving back out so there's an even flow here the cards are getting a little choppy five of pentacles high priestess yeah so it's like yeah that's where it's like your intuitive practices are going to support you in the times where you're like this is like the meh days like meh like I, yeah blech. it's just not great right so the like your high priestess energy your intuition is going to connect you to your to turn those kinds of days into good days they don't have to be perfect but if there's like one thing that you can see that's good about that day, or you can see how it might not be blank, you can see how it could become blank, you see how it might uh, end up being like blank, it reminds you of the time that something went really well, such as when blank. These are all, all examples of your high priestess informing this and reminding you, look up. Do not look down when you're in these kinds of meh days. Do not look down. But this is part of your spiritual practice, right? So it's like, do not look down. Keep your eyes focused up because there's a door right around the corner from where you are or behind you. But if you're focused down on the things that aren't working, you won't see it. And that's where this balance comes into play, right? That's the, the, the antagonist factor of the balance. It's like if we're not paying attention to and tending to balancing ourselves and our energy, we can focus too much downward and miss the doors that open up for us right around us. Two of pentacles, seven of pentacles, justice, and the chariot. Yeah. Um, so again, this is like a balance. We're coming into balance. And yeah, it's not like it's a seven of pentacles like it's it's not sexy like journaling every day is time consuming sometimes right but if you look at the time lost you're really losing the big picture of the emotions gained the connection to yourself that's gained the integration the awareness that's gained the availability how that makes you available not just to yourself but to other people because you're you're showing up having emptied your cup in a way that integrates emotions so that you're not carrying them in here and then you know having these like minor freakouts you're able to articulate your emotions in a way that doesn't require other people to take responsibility for you which means that you show up in your whole self authentically right so it's like are these practices like do they come blasting through do they always feel like the sun no but they can make the days that feel like the sun so much better right and you can you begin to anticipate the days where it feels like the sun and i think that's where this is like that sense of um justice takes on a new meaning because justice doesn't come when you're wronged justice is built into the system because you're making your own kind of justice for yourself with these practices and it'll be a really strong support i think for the next couple months specifically with this retrograde energy that we're in right now um, not because i anticipate anything horrible happening though i know the world is at a fever pitch at times so it would not be unfathomable that something might but this is justice takes on a new meaning through these practices because you begin to anticipate you begin to anticipate and understand that your reaction to the things happening in your life, it's not some like ordained or, you know, from the, from, like it's not happening to you, right? You realize that it's happening for you. And that's kind of this chariot cancerian energy where you're moving forward, right? It's like taking the, the, the illusion of the moon away because <laughs> cancerian is moon energy, right? So, um, it's like it's taking that illusion away and you're beginning to see this what what justice means when you tend to your own energy in a really healthy way so three 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 on the time i'm going to pull from the notes from the universe on love and connection deck by mike dooley i feel like i'm really in my capricorn today i don't know <laughs> capricorn is known for more than um, methods and procedures though deeply intuitive sign as well deeply intuitive Spirit, what messages do you have? For, oh, 
karma's on your side. Yes, yes, absolutely. It's not just the wheel here. This is about the practices. This is how it will feel. It will feel like spirit is on your side and rooting for you. And what's what's actually happening is that spirit is applauding you, but it's applauding the efforts that you put in before because it makes you so much more, it makes it so much possible, so much more possible. Oh my goodness, I'm stumbling here. So much more possible for you to have good days out of intention not just when they happen to be there right love is the reason yes lean into that love is the reason that's why all of this matters and not just romantic love but like a love for yourself too this is self-care this whole reading is like self-care and it's not hashtagable it's not like you can't you know post it on instagram you can't do those you i mean you could but it's the slow process right? It's like you see these like six month, six to 12 month transformation photos and somebody may not have posted a single thing about those transformations, but they happen steadily and, and with, with this, um, effort of, of consistency. That's the consistency is the, is the key word here. Um, I'm going to pull from the miracles now deck. Okay. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for this June second reading please whoa 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 releasing anger from the past sets me free in the present this is the other thing too about practices like this it helps you to integrate any kind of frustration that you feel and blame that you feel at yourself because you begin to realize that uh, and you forgive yourself at the same time right you forgive yourself at the same time because through these things you begin to see that you're you are the architect of your experience you are so much more empowered than you might think. Can we change other people and all of our circumstances at once? No, absolutely not. You cannot do that. It's just not possible. Um, it's not possible. But what can you do? You can focus on dealing with the emotions as they come up. And it's that releasing, right? It sets you free in the present. This isn't just, you know, uh, it says anger, but this isn't just about anger. This is about, um, this is absolutely about what it is that you're feeling and integrating that where you are through these practices. It's kind of like a grounding exercise, right? A little bit of a grounding exercise. When I feel blocked emotionally, uh, when I feel blocked, there's a comma there. I didn't see it. When I feel blocked, emotionally distressed or overwhelmed, I turn to my breath. That's the present moment too, right? So that's another excellent message about meditation and integrating that. And that's like meditative practices. Even if it's just 10 minutes in the morning, getting in touch with your breath, slowing down, right? There's a trickle effect into the rest of your life. And you see it when, when I don't do my spiritual practices, my, this little Fitbit <laughs> tells me how my heart rate changes. It increases when I don't do these things because my stress level overall increases. I'm the nerd that likes to look at that kind of data. And like, that's how I monitor my own self. If I'm in a busy period where I know I can't, um, you know, tend to every single detail like that. Right. Um, so it's like having that information is helpful and it's like, oh, I noticed too, or I'll see and I'll be like, oh, I noticed that that's, you know, changed a bit. So, I, you know, what can I do to tweak that? It's just about being in touch and in tune, right? So that is your reading for today though, my darling daily creatives. And um, if this resonated, please like and subscribe. I would love to have you on the channel. So thank you so much for that. Uh, but there, and there are other ways you can connect too. So feel free to check that out. Um, but if this is where we part, my darling daily creatives, I hope that wherever this finds you on the time space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, I hope that it finds you very, very well. Take care, my lovelies. Bye.